There's people out there that hate me, but I promise you, they probably watched at least one of my videos and have gotten some value from it. See, if you want to be a content creator or a moto vlogger, you have to create content that's so good, even your biggest haters will get value from. Your haters will watch you closer than any of your supporters. Don't forget that. So I've been trying to figure out social media for about five years. I first started in 2018. I didn't really start gaining traction for the Adobe Moto brand until about the last six months. See, I had actually given up on my dream to be a content creator. I had finally graduated college with my marketing degree and it was time to get a real job. Funny enough, the jobs that I got always had something to do with social media. I became a marketing director right out of college as well as a college professor. I got really good at marketing and branding in my senior year of college. I was mentoring people in their field that have been in their field for a lot longer than me. And I think part of the reason I was so good at marketing and branding is because I had experience trying to figure it out on YouTube. See, the truth is I was really good at marketing and branding, but I was only good at it for other people. For some reason, I just couldn't figure it out for myself. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was trying to be like everybody else. I was trying to cover like the same topics as everybody else and I wasn't really giving much value. The thing is when I first started making content, I was making content for myself. I did have a couple of videos that popped off like how to vinyl wrap a motorcycle. It's something that I learned how to do on my own and I did it to a lot of my motorcycles in the past. I figured it would help some people but honestly when I made that video, I actually didn't enjoy making it. And it's because I didn't want to be known as the vinyl wrapping guy. I knew that video would do well. And as a matter of fact, those are like my highest performing videos to date. But I actually don't even enjoy vinyl wrapping. Those videos took forever to make and they took hours to edit. But I know it helped a lot of people. But at the time, I really didn't care about helping other people. And to succeed in the social media content creation game, you have to make content for other people. And it has to be valuable content. The reason I blew up on TikTok and I went from 4,000 followers to about 260,000, all in a span of six months, is because I started giving value to other people. Value happens in two ways. First way is educational. If you could find something to teach, and it's something that a lot of people may want to know about or know how to do, then that would be considered value. The other form of value is a little bit harder to deliver, and that's entertainment. Now, being yourself works but it is social media so you have to be yourself just turned up a couple notches I'm just stretching you fuckers. the first part of my content is always to deliver value and to deliver value in two ways education and entertainment you can certainly deliver education only or entertainment only but if you can blend both of those pieces of value into one piece of content you're ahead of the game the next part is originality. What sets you apart from other creators in your niche? What are you doing that's different from everybody else? And why should I care about your motorcycle review when Chase on Two Wheels is the motorcycle review guy? And then I figured out delivery. Originality is hard to come by, especially in this space of motovlogging. Motovlogging is one of those things that are just so recycled, unless it's a new motorcycle that comes out, it's gonna be difficult for you to stand out and be original. But can you deliver the same information in an original way? Now, if I told you this is how you change oil, you might click off. But if I say something like, this is how you change oil, you moron, it might just trigger some sensitive emotions. You pair that with something like, did you know you could use car oil in a motorcycle? And people will be so quick to follow along. Why? Because everybody's got a fucking opinion and everybody's opinion matters. Everybody wants a trophy. So I make these informative how-to videos and sometimes they can be controversial. This guy at Cycle Gear calls it rage baiting. But the truth is, I hardly ever tell anybody that this is what they should do. I just show you what I do and it's up to you if you want to do that too. What I've realized over time is not everybody is going to like you. And I think once you finally understand that in your brain, you'll realize that those people who come in and root for you to lose are insignificant. Now I'm not saying make up a bunch of bull in your head. Create content that's actually useful. Do your research on the people who are doing the same thing as you and figure out what they're not doing and do that. For instance, I noticed a lot of motor vloggers are very neutral with their opinions. Nobody wants to pick a side because all they want to do is please everybody that watches their content. But remember when I said when you realize that not everybody's gonna like you? Well, you start to form your own opinions and while a lot of people may disagree, you might gain a lot more respect than you think. I've had a lot of comments lately from people who used to think that I was a 
pick, but they continue to follow. Because again, the haters will follow you closer than your supporters. And now I'm getting comments like, damn, I used to not like you, but I'm realizing how real you are. And it's so refreshing. Nobody else is doing it. Your second lesson today is to be original, but also be 100% real okay this next part I don't know if it's like the third layer but you have to show up every single day and I know that sounds hard to do but the way you can get over that is to stop overthinking the stuff that you post when I started TikTok, I think I was posting at minimum two times a day and what helped me out with short form content on TikTok was that I had been making long form content for like four years and if you know anything about making long form content it takes forever I was doing things like b-rolls transitions shooting in 24 frames a second using speed ramps all this cool stuff that doesn't really matter but in your head it's like the most important details but take a quick moment to think about the things that I have said this is the first time I've mentioned b-roll or any of those transitions and in the context that I'm mentioning it now it doesn't matter so anybody can post every single day if you're checking your text every day if you're checking Facebook posts every day if you're checking Instagram posts and comments every day you have time to post content every single day now because i had been posting long form content for a really long time i had the advantage because short form content to me was quick i could knock out a tiktok short form video that checks off all my required boxes within an hour that's including filming it's probably like 15 to 20 minutes of filming and the rest of the time is just editing and posting post every single day it sounds really hard, but if you don't make it that complicated, it's actually pretty damn easy. Here's what you get from posting every single day. You build trust with your audience. I don't care if that's 10 people, 20 people, one person. The people who are watching your content are gonna trust you because they know you're gonna show up for them every single day. It's like a really loyal employee. You might not give a shit that they take extra breaks because they work really hard, they get the job done, and they show up every single day. Remember who you're doing this for. You're not doing it for yourself, you're doing this for everybody else. Being a content creator is a selfless act. And once you realize that this is for them and not for you, your brand will grow and you'll find success. Okay, this is the part of the show that I tell you which gear that I'm using because it does matter a little bit. The last layer to all of my content is quality. Now again, quality starts in the beginning, right? Value and entertainment, but what about technical quality? Technical quality is in this. I use a Sony a7S III for most of my talking head videos, or if I'm pointing it to myself like this, obviously I have a little mic right there, and everything I'm shooting now is in 4K. I use 30 frames a second because that's the most natural. I'm not trying to do anything cinematic. I used to use 24 frames a second, but now I just, I just don't. Fun fact, Mr. Beast shoots in 1080. I use a GoPro Hero 9 and it has the old school attachment. I have a Sony mic attached to it and everything is in there like a typical motovlogger. I'll make a more detailed motovlogging setup for all my members. So if you're not a member yet and you'd like more behind the scenes videos or technical gear that I use, those are the type of behind the scenes videos that I'm gonna be creating for my members. And here are my members. Thank you guys so much for being a member. I appreciate the support. You guys are today's sponsor of this video. So that's pretty much my moto vlogging content creation sandwich. I hope this video helps you get started. Whether you're at the beginning of your moto vlogging career or if you're a two or three year veteran, I wanna help you grow. And the reason I wanna help you grow is because I wanna set up my own network of people who do things like I do. And the reason I want you to grow is because I bet I could learn something from you. There's a lot of small moto vloggers out there that kind of started when I started and I know they've kind of fallen off. But if you're watching this and this is something you've always wanted to do, I'm here to help you. I want to learn from you as well because personally I have a goal. I want a million fucking subscribers. It sounds stupid and vain and the truth is I could care less about how many followers I have. I just know the importance of setting goals and I think setting that goal for myself will help keep me on track. It'll help me to continue to create really useful content for you guys and honestly I don't think it's been done in, in a while and those guys that actually have like millions of followers they're only like getting 10% of views which doesn't make sense to me. See, I really love motovlogging. Like, I love 
the idea of it. I used to love watching it, and I really enjoy peering into other people's lives. But over the years, I've seen this genre kind of slowly dying off. But I'm hoping those guys that watch people like the Mr. Beasts or the Ryan Trahans will run into a moto vlogger. It doesn't have to be me. And they get inspired to want to ride a motorcycle. Because at the end of the day, motorcycles are my true passion in life. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't figure these things out and slowly started to realize that I'm making content for you all and not for me. The moment you find success on this platform is the moment you stop being selfish and start becoming selfless. That is all.